O Lord, so that only the truth may be spoken and only the truth heard. Amen. Please be seated. So, welcome back, everybody. We're now in the midst of September. We're back into the regular fall routine. And yes, that means coming to church. That means coming to hear me or Father Bill or the lay readers or Matt preach. And I gotta tell you, this week we have a doozy. Right? And it was weird for me this week, right? Because normally, preaching is not something that causes me stress. Preaching is not something that causes me uh, a great deal of concern about what I'm going to be able to say. And yet, as I'm confronted about these readings about forgiveness, I'm kind of stuck. Which, isn't that kind of weird? Right? The church is basically built on this idea that Christ came into the world to forgive sins, bring new life and resurrection. And in today's gospel, we hear that extended to the rest of the church. Peter asks Jesus, if somebody who's a member of this community, who follows you, Jesus, what should I do? Should I forgive him once, twice? Surely seven times is the max, right? After that, he's out. No, but Jesus responds with something different. He says, not seven times, but seventy times. And then proceeds to tell a parable. And as I was reflecting on both the instruction to the church and my own sort of discontent and confusion and not really knowing what to say. I thought about why that's the case. Why is it that my tongue this particular week has been tied? Why is it that my brain hasn't been able to wrap itself around some of these concepts of forgiving not once or twice, not seven times, but seventy times, and what to say about it? I think part of the difficulty is that real forgiveness, transformative forgiveness, is really, really difficult. I mean, think about it. If somebody, I don't know, shows up five minutes late to a meeting, or to have a beer that they've agreed to do during the week, that's easy to forgive, right? No problem. Five minutes late, traffic happens. Extend that to about half an hour. You're a little bit more annoyed. But sure, at least they showed up. How about extending that another hour? Maybe two or three. Now it gets a little more difficult. Now that's a very benign example. But I I think it's one that each of us has experienced in some way. And each time that we get annoyed, each time that we get uh, disrespected, any time that we get to a point where we feel that we are not cared for, it's at those moments that being able to forgive becomes difficult. It's at those moments that we're called by Jesus to do something different. We're not called to the regular human response of getting mad or sending an avalanche of text messages. We're called to look at the person, see what their life circumstance is, and forgive them. Because at one point or another, we're going to be the ones that are running five, 
minutes late, 10 minutes late, three hours late. As a Christian community, we are called to a collective life together. This is not something that we simply do on Sunday mornings. This is a wider community that has implications for how we live out our life each and every day of the week. When Jesus speaks in his parable, he talks about a servant who owes a great debt to his master. And the servant knows that the time appointed for the debt to be repaid has come. And so the master calls him in and he says, just give me a little more time. Just give me a little more time and I'll be able to pay you everything that I owe. And again, in this parable that Jesus tells, the king does not act like a normal king. The king, instead of throwing him into prison, or saying that you need to pay me now, says, don't worry about it. The debt's gone. You and I, we are on good terms. And the slave rejoices. He's like, oh, thank God. Now I don't have to go to prison. Now I don't have to face the wrath of the king. And I'm able to, to live my life. I'm able to do something new. As the parable progresses though, I, I'm struck that the servant's response is very human. Right? It's one of forgetfulness. So he's forgiven this massive debt. And then literally, five minutes later, he goes to another person who owes him a debt and says, you must pay me now. I, I must have what you owe or I will toss you into prison. I think that what this parable points to, because again, a parable is not a, a real flesh and blood story. It's more of a metaphor to ask us to reflect on our own lives. It's it's an invitation for us to realize two things. One is the call to forgiveness. That recognition that forgiveness is hard. Forgiveness is something that we will eventually need in our own lives. And so we need to extend it to those that we love and even those that we don't love so much. But also that human beings, we, you and I, we tend to be forgetful. We tend to be forgetful of the ways in which we are loved, the ways in which we are upheld, the ways in which we are forgiven. As we gather each and every week, to worship, to pray, to sing, and to be nourished by the sacrament, we are called to remember who we are. We are called to remember that we are forgiven. We are called to be the opposite of the servant, to not be forgetful, but to be mindful to be mindful that we are beloved children of God. All of our faults and failings have been forgiven. We are invited to the feast of new life and resurrection. I pray that as we move forward in our lives and in our worship today, we retain that mindfulness. We retain that hope and that knowledge that God forgives us, God loves us, 
and God upholds us, so too does the community of his church here at St. Jude's. We are called to love, to cherish, and forgive each other, to be mindful of the needs of others, and to be mindful of the fact that even when there is a sin against us, even when we feel hurt or betrayed, we are called to forgive because we know at one point we're going to be the ones that need that forgiveness too. We're not perfect. We are a broken, scarred, and yet loving community. I hope and I pray that as we continue to follow in the way of Jesus, we will forgive not once or twice, not seven times, but seventy times, or as many times as, ne as is necessary. Because that's who we're called to be. And we're not going to get it right every single time, but we're asked to try. We're asked to keep that mindfulness and that love and that grace open in our own lives and to extend it into the life of others. Amen.